Okay, uh, next session we have uh, demystifying WebAuthn and passkeys. Uh, Nick Steele from One Password and Matthew Miller once again from Duo Security. Do we have a Nick somewhere in the room? Okay, there you go. He's right here. Okay, uh, Nick, Matthew, welcome to the stage. Hold on, I gotta make sure I'm mic'd up. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Right on. Who, uh, did anyone go to Tim's talk this morning? Feel like they know what pass keys are? Right on. Anyone come to Matt's talk? All right. <laughs> well, that, that's a good question, though. Who, who feels like they know what pass keys are by like, the definition right now? All right. All right. That's pretty good. I'll take it. For the rest of you, we'll, we'll, you'll have a better sense of it at the end of it, hopefully. Hi, hi, hi. Hope so. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so, hi. I'm. Um, Let's see. There we go, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, I'm Nick Steele. This is Matt Miller. Um, I'm a product manager uh, over at 1Password now, and, and, and uh, if you didn't see Matt's talk earlier, he's, he's a, a technical leader over at Cisco. Um, we've been working on um, WebAuthn for, man, seven, yeah, eight, it's been a long time. eight years now. 50 years. <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was wild when like, Andrew earlier introduced, it, or, it, he was talking about how many hours were spent working oh, on Fido 60, at this point. It's Fido, something yeah. like 60, seven years hours, of work. Seven, seven years, 24 hours a day, yeah. seven days a week. I've been putting in a lot of time, man. <laughs> One year of that tomorrow. No. Um, so anyhow, hi, we're, we're here to talk kind of about the, um, the jargon associated with Fido and all the words and buzzword or otherwise, that you'll probably hear thrown around. Um, there's, there's a lot of complexity to FIDO authentication and to pass keys and, and the WebAuthn standard. And we're here to kind of um, help demystify some of the, the technical complexity without getting too technical. Um, I love this tweet I got a while back um, because some poor guy online that's, you know, assumed uh, something I tweeted about passkeys was something I, I did by myself and I was trying to ruin his life. Um, I'm not trying to ruin anyone's life, at least today. Um, but we're, we're, we're pretty far along in this, in this story. And so it's important to talk about, you know, uh, how far we've come. And we're, compared to, you know, even a year ago, um, in a much different spot with uh, FIDO keys, with authentication, with, and who's adopting it. In fact, you know, when we started working on this, um, I still have a slide deck where I you know, was confident, I feel like, that, that 1Password and Dashlane and these other password managers were going to be dinosaurs. They were going to be extinct by FIDO. But they actually um, have really embraced passwordless and a lot of the new uh, standards regarding authentication that are coming out. And we've kind of shifted from being not just password managers, but to credential providers and passkey providers. Um, and you'll start hearing these terms more often, and we'll try to go through um, the differences and the nuances in some of these terms. But really what we're trying to do is just level set, especially as we go into the next few days, of really technical content and the workshops to come on Wednesday. Um, so as you may have seen in Tim or Matt's talk earlier, or even what Andrew was talking about the keynote this morning, um, we've started to see this, this real embracing of passwordless and pass keys and the security uh, bar that they raise for organizations. So next to Google, Apple, and Microsoft, which are these you know, pl huge platforms uh, that now offer pass keys, 1Password, Dashlane, Bitwarden, KeyPass, Passbolt, um, LastPass, many other platforms are beginning to support pass key management as well. And we'll kind of talk about what the differences are between these two platforms. But all the, you know, to come and meet us on the credential provider side, all these relying parties, and we'll go over that term too, these online services um, have started to offer pass keys to their customers as, and well, as well. And this is a short list. There's, there's more, and you may have seen them this morning. 
Um, additionally, in the government space with uh, NIST 800-63, revision four, um, we're starting to see uh, pass keys become available in, in, in government contexts. So they're going to be, uh, you're gonna be able to use pass keys in AAL2 level in some situations. And we're starting to see uh, government organizations talk about this more, which is really exciting. Um, also, in the last year or so, we've started to see uh, native APIs become uh, widely available um, by Apple and Android. Um, and then, I think as of last week, by default, um, Google will, will prefer, to, prefer you to use pass keys in your Google account, which is huge. Um, at 1Password, we've seen, since we launched pass keys um, ourselves, over 150,000 pass keys created and in use by our users, uh, which, is, which is no small feat, and Mixing Travis made that possible. So good job, guys. Um, so that kind of covers where we're at. We're starting to see adoption. We're starting to see usage. Uh, but we're still seeing a lot of confusion, in, uh, I think, across the industry around what, what Paskies um, can do what, you know, because it, it's a pretty broad definition. When can they be used? How can I use them across different platforms? So what Matt is going to cover now is, is some of the how we're doing it, the technical side of WebAuthn in, in a pretty broad overview. So I'll let Matt take it away. So we just want to emphasize the importance of passkey as a term um, and clear up what a passkey is in the context that we've had many years of WebAuthn. We've had a year, a year and a half of passkey. Like, what is the relationship between all of these things? And so that's something that we want to clear up for you. Um, it's important to clear up what exactly a passkey is because most people are going to interact with FIDO2 via, uh, with it being framed as a passkey, an alternative to passwords. And in fact, the FIDO Alliance states that passkeys are a, quote, replacement for passwords that provide faster, easier, and more secure sign-ins to websites and apps across a user's devices. Great. Mostly a marketing term. Depending on what side of the sort of uh, product engineering line you are, um, a passkey uh, is primarily part of that marketing term. It's, it's an effort to give a name to a highly technical concept with many uh, edges. and uh, but. We needed something for the consumer space, uh, we being the final lines. We needed something for consumers, for regular users, for your, for your grandparents and your moms and dads to be able to embrace this technology and not have to really know like, what a FIDO discoverable credential is. It's just a passkey. So in FIDO2 authentication, just for a brief overview, uh, we have three main players. You have the passkey, uh, sorry, the authenticator or the passkey provider is on the left-hand side. The user is even further left off screen. Uh, the client here is the browser. WebAuthn is a browser API after all, and that's the primary way that uh, passkeys will be used. And then uh, wiring up those WebAuthn API calls is your relying party. This is the website that you're trying to log into. So it's a pretty standard. This is the relationship laid out of all the active players and what a uh, FIDO2 authentication ceremony um, involves. So um, as, uh, by way of example, passkey provider is a fairly new term. That is the name of the organization that's owning the passkey lifecycle. Uh, first party passkey providers are those uh, maintained by the platform maintainers, so Google Password Manager, iCloud Keychain, and Microsoft you know, via Windows Hello. Third party passkey providers are organizations like 1Password and Dashlane, Bitwarden, and Pass, LastPass, all of those other third party organizations that are free to to come to the table as long as they're willing to handle a uh, passkey lifecycle. So what about WebAuthn? WebAuthn is still the API that makes passkeys po uh, possible. It is a browser API that is uh, one half of FIDO2. So when you hear FIDO2 authentication, what you're actually hearing about is WebAuthn, which is, uh, well, I don't have that example, but WebAuthn governs the RP and the browser's relationship. And then you have CTAP2 as the other half of FIDO2. And that governs how the browser and security keys uh, can talk to each other. And then browsers and platform authenticators uh, may or may not use CTAP2. Most of them use uh, something, you know, they're kind of free to however they want um, to pursue that. Uh, there are aspects of CTAP2 and WebAuthn that allow for hybrid registration. Uh, hybrid registration, to clear up another term, is the QR code you see that you scan with your phone to register something on your phone or to sign in on a desktop using a credential that's available to your phone. So those are all uh, part of FIDO2 as well. Um, and again, so going back to our graph here, just to really emphasize 
um, FIDO2 is comprised of CTAP2 and WebAuthn. That's the relationship between all of these. So if, uh, peeling back the marketing layer and looking at the, the inner workings of passkey authentication, passkeys are discoverable FIDO2 credentials. The uh, attribute of a passkey that distinguishes them is the backup eligibility and their backup status. So backup eligibility is an unchangeable characteristic of a passkey at the time of creation that basically says this passkey, it is a provider communicating to a relying party whether or not the credential could appear for use on another device. That is a um, synced passkey. A device-bound passkey is one that is not backup eligible. Backup status is merely an indicator of whether or not a passkey is backed up or not. And that can change over time. Uh, as with all web authenticity, again, passkeys is WebAuthn, and just like with WebAuthn ceremonies, passkeys also require user proximity, and you can also require UV for multi-factor authentication. Important to note that synced passkeys and device-bound passkeys hold different and nuanced security properties that uh, you're going, that a relying party, most consumer relying parties probably want the account recovery because it makes their job easier. It's fewer help desk requests. Uh, it's less uh, infrastructure needed to help with account recovery because if a f person drops their phone into the ocean, like Shopify, a store on Shopify, I shouldn't really need to know um, that and help the user recover. The user can sign into their provider again on a new device and gain access to their pass keys and they're good to go. That's the power of synced pass keys. Uh, I want to recap FIDO2 authentication real quick. Uh, passwords, so here's kind of the cons of passwords. They're symmetric secrets. Uh, they're often reused because humans have a hard time remembering multiple, uh, you know, unique passwords. That's why we use password managers. They're easily fished, uh, the, which is, you know, phishing resistance of WebAuthn is to tackle that. And then um, you can, uh, an attacker can take advantage of a user account that is backed by password credentials by uh, using credential stuffing, uh, social engineering uh, for phishing, and uh, server leakage. If a database gets compromised, password reuse could allow an attacker to gain access to that person's account on another unrelated website. FIDO addresses all of those. Machine generated uh, private public key pairs uh, get rid of the symmetric secret using asymmetric cryptography. Uh, pass keys are bound to a single RP, so you're not gonna re you reuse a pass key a key pair um, on any website. Every website gets its own unique key pair. Their uh, FIDO credentials are also phishing resistant, of course, because the browser helps make sure that you can't exercise a credential or a pass key on a site that it wasn't registered for. And because of the user presence, the, interact, the user needs to interact with an authenticator that can use a passkey, which um, defeats uh, remote attacks. Uh, briefly, here's kind of the uh, general process. The client is the browser, and a user comes in and says, hey, I'm ready to log in. The relying party gives to the browser a random challenge that is use usable one time. A response from an authenticator signs over the challenge with its private key. And using the previously registered public key, the relying party can verify that authentication uh, to basically uh, securely handle authentication. Pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, briefly, there's this concept of user presence. Is it gives the relying party assurance that the user has physical access to an authenticator. So this is intended to defeat remote attacks where a, an attacker can remotely use a credential in the same way that they could just use a username and a password. Uh, this provides the something you have. So the user has the authenticator, that the access device that they're using to sign in. Um, the physical action here, it's not necessarily important that uh, a biometric was scanned or a pin was entered. It's the fact that the user is there to perform either of those that provides user presence. Pin support and biometrics provide, are, are how user verification is achieved. So you're going to hear user presence is user presence and user verification. These are the two factors that are provided in a WebAuthn, which is why uh, pass keys are multi-factor authentication. Because the pin support is something you know, or the biometric is something you are, and when combined with user presence, you get MFA. Uh, this, is a, this is a point I want to take a moment to really hammer home. There is no guarantee of biometric-only use of WebAuthn. It is not possible. The pin is always a possible fallback for when biometric is unavailable. Or if you want to add a biometric, how do you do that? You enter the device pin. Therefore, there is no way for an RP to only request biometric be used for user verification. And I'm going to hand it off to Nick at this point to talk more about um, synced versus device-bound passkeys. 
Yeah, so we kind of covered um, the security properties and the main players in, uh, in FIDO2 authentication uh, ceremonies now. And, uh, we call them ceremonies because kind of, so WebAuthn compared to say a protocol requires user interaction and generally what's in band for a protocol is out of band for a ceremony. There needs to be a physical interaction that gives us user verification or user presence through this pin or biometric as Matt was talking about earlier. Um, in order to, to, to complete the ceremony. So uh, I'm going to talk a bit now about um, synced and device bound um, pass keys, which I think is, is, a is, is a really, it's a really important topic now um, in the space because there's a lot of uh, different security properties you can get by uh, just these two different types of pass keys. Um, so as we mentioned before, a pass key is a discoverable credential. A discoverable credential in a nutshell, is a credential that um, can be tied, to, tied back to an authenticator by a, uh, by a client. So when I go to log in with my, uh, with my, my one password account and I have a passkey stored in it, um, I'll be able to get some sort of notification, probably via a, a, a pop-up um, or, or modal attached to an input field that says, hey, we see a passkey associated with this. Do you want to go use it? That, that's essentially what a discoverable credential is, or, or really like all this need, needed about it. Um, and when a passkey um, can be uh, used across multiple, multiple devices um, and still be discoverable across all these, diff the, these devices, that's when we have a synced passkey. So it goes to follow that when a passkey can only be used from a single device, well, now we have a device-bound passkey. And so when we think about device-bound passkeys, we're, we're generally talking about um, you know, FATN tokens, UB keys, um, RSA tokens that can be tied, that where, where a credential is tied specifically to that piece of hardware. Um, this may change, and this can change. There, you could have a passkey provider uh, that potentially binds a key to a single laptop or, or phone that it exists on. Um, but for now, that's, that's kind of a, a general good way of thinking about it is it's, it's a standalone piece of hardware capable of storing passkeys. Um, this is a, uh, a diagram that was originally made by Dean Sachs from AWS, a uh, good friend and great engineer. Um, this, uh, this kind of covers uh, the, the, the van of what, of what we get with, with discoverable credentials as a whole. So uh, both device-bound and sync pass keys can, can be discoverable um, to a point, but device-bound tend to be non-discoverable, so you won't get that modal in some cases. Um, but they share a lot of really good overlapping properties, and we kind of talked about those with the FIDO in a nutshell slide when we were talking about what you get with, uh, with FIDO authentication and why it raises uh, the security bar against pass passwords. So passkeys, um, or WebAuthn credentials, as uh, you know, we used to call them, um, are still cryptographic key, key pairs um, where the private key is going to be stored um, within a passkey provider or on an authenticator. Um, it, they're still phishing resistant, and they still can be used be used for for MFA, and uh, and they're they're bound to a single site, so they're they're origin bound. A passkey made for example.com can only be used on example.com. However, there are some 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 differences between the two. So when we talk about a sync passkey, right, they're shareable. So that uh, key material, the private key associated. Uh, with the public key and it, that, that makes up this passkey is exportable. I can have a, uh, a, a instance of one, my one password vault on my phone and one on my uh, laptop, and I will be able to receive or ha use the passkey across both devices without using hybrid authentication, which is a topic we'll, we'll discuss towards the end here. Um, additionally, with sync passkeys, um, I can share them. Um, I can airdrop my passkey to another user. Uh, or, or in the case of on, on an iPhone, someone within my contact list. Um, and generally, credential recovery is a much easier process. This was a terribly hard story to tell uh, when we were first working on WebAuthn, uh, figuring out how we would, say, uh, handle recovery on behalf of a user, or if a, if, if a user loses their device, how do we securely create a new passkey, or uh, I, I think that the, the biggest piece of advice we had initially was, oh, you should enroll many, many authenticators to a single site in order to deal with this. Um, but this is a much more elegant solution, I'd say, is being able to have this passkey syncable across many devices. 
Um, on the device bound side, uh, non exportable key material is really the big, the big thing here. Being able to have a, a key that can only exist in one place uh, is really important for some organizations, especially high assurance organizations. We t I talked about that idea of being AAL2, Authenticator Assurance Level 2 with a NIST. Um, this is the only way you're going to be able to achieve it, AL2 with, with, with pass keys um, in, in, that, uh, in that context if you're, if, if, you're, if you're actually trying to be FIPS compliant. Um, and also both these, uh, these types of credentials and uh, non-discoverable credentials as well are attestable. And we won't talk too much about attestation because this is a, a, another uh, deep Dar Darby Dragons uh, topic, but attestation uh, it is essentially a way for us to tell the provenance of a passkey uh, by a certain piece of hardware. So uh, if I receive a passkey from a, from a, a UB key or from, um, from Apple, I should be able to uh, receive an attestation that gives me cryptographic proof that this piece of hardware or this laptop, this uh, passkey provider, uh, they can prove to me that they created the passkey in question. So as an organization, I can have some insight into the uh, authenticator that was used and if I choose to trust it or not, because there, there may be a case where the, I, I, want a higher, uh, I want higher assurance in the authenticator I was using. There we go. Um, so I really want to drive home that, you know, sync, sync passkeys are probably going to be the most common form of passkey used as opposed to device-bound passkeys for average consumers. Um, and that these, these passkeys are really built to be backed up and synchronized and used across many devices. Uh, this, really, this, this really is going to help the majority of, of, of users. I think that there's a lot of uh, different feelings about like which, which passkey um, is, is more secure, but Generally, this is the uh, this is the kind of passkey that that your 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 grandma is going to use when eventually we, we roll it, roll it out to, to everyone. Hopefully, um, to touch on on a point Matt made earlier, um, and I was talking about passkey providers. It doesn't necessarily need to be a platform. It could be um, a, a password manager or now a credential manager um, or other third party software that's that's capable of managing and storing pass passkeys. Um, what these providers need to main, uh, maintain and, and their sort of uh, trust uh, value here is by providing a passkey sync fabric. And the sync fabric is something that is currently uh, being worked on, on on getting certified within the FIDO Alliance, um, but it's, it, it's, going, it, it's going to allow us to pass passkeys uh, back and forth in a trustful way. So in order to tell what you got, um, we, we talked about that idea of, uh, of attestability. That's still probably the best way. Many, most passkey providers are going to provide an AA GUID um, to, when an RP, or to an RP that will give it unattested proof um, of who it is. So you, this is really good for UX hint, hinting. Uh, you can still request attestation, but this is often returned mostly by security keys only. Um, there's other forms of attestation. It changes by device. And then um, there's also additional signals you can use to figure out what kind of passkey you've been given, sync, device bound, um, using other signals uh, from the response. So the user agent transports, the, uh, transports or the client data that you receive back. Um, all this can be used to help make UX decisions and uh, infer other uh, provider identity uh, signal. So I touched on hybrid authentication. Hybrid authentication allows for pass keys, device bound pass keys, to be used to authenticate on a separate device. So the device with the pass key will generate, uh, the, 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 the device with the, with the pass key will generate the WebAuthn response, and the client will hand back the, the, uh, the request. Uh, so that allows us to, uh, to have, use device bound pass keys across not just you know, the device it's on and, and, and use it potentially on other devices. So this works in Chrome. Um, today on, on iOS and, and uh, through OS X and iOS as well. Um, so, so just some quick things um, about, that are, that, about FIDO that's being worked on right now that, that can be tough and, and are kind of like pain pi points that I see. Um, Passkeys right now can be used to define most types of FIDO credentials and this is also um, a bit 
dodgy because this means that there are many there are many types of FIDO credentials, but they're all under under the umbrella of of, of pass keys. So having a very like a uh, strict definition right now is 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 tough to find. Um, and I think that there are differences in in which keys are which and what's called a pass key that that have caused some some trouble. Um, more pass key providers are becoming available, but uh, many providers right now have to intercept WebAuthn APIs uh, or Web, the WebAuthn API calls that you that we're getting in the browser, which can be tough. And there isn't really an easy solution to this problem right now, but we're we're definitely working towards one. Um, some pass keys can be synced across devices, the syncable pass keys, and this is great for uh, recovery. Um, it really helps tell that account recovery story. But this is a potential showstopper if you are in a regulated space where you need higher assurance. And this is an ongoing discussion as well. So I'm going to um, hand this off to Matt to finish this up. Unfortunately, we are out of time, yeah. so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, passkeys.dev, if you want more dev-centric, uh, there's a fa uh, fantastic terminology section on there. WebAuthn.io is a great place. It's a sandbox for you to take WebAuthn for a spin under all kinds of various configurations that are possible on there. Nick and I are co-chairs of the WebAuthn Adoption Community Group at the W3C. Uh, that is open to anyone to come and join and ask questions. We meet uh, every other week. And then uh, for like C-levels, I characterize it here, but for more of that marketing side of what passkeys are, the FidoAlliance.org slash passkeys is a great resource. So thank you very much for your time. Yeah, Appreciate we'll be it. in the hallway too. Yeah. We have time? Uh, would, you, would you like to take, just take one question online? We can take one question. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, Make it let good. me just wait for it. Uh, is there a way to, for us to differentiate between synced and device-bound passkeys, or should I, as a developer, assume all passkeys may potentially become synced passkeys? There is a definitive signal that a relying party developer can use to identify synced passkeys from device-bound passkeys. It is called the BE, the backup eligibility flag in the authenticator data that you get back um, during, during registration and authentication will um, assert the provider's uh, knowledge of the backup eligibility of a credential. Yeah, we have nine more questions, but hope you can. Oh. Well, well, we can answer and, and, questions in the yeah. hallway, and, yes, and yes. also we're happy to follow up with, with those online. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You.